production systems. In some dynamic systems, we can move from one state to another. For example, we may wish to move from the state off to the state on in a system modeling the function of the light bulb. You flip a switch and the bulb moves into an on state. And when you flip it back, the bulb moves to an off state. Other systems are quite a bit more complex than this, but at least this gives us a beginning. The more complex systems will have a much larger number of states. And having to define state to state transitions for every single case becomes burdensome. The state space complexity may be due to the fact that there are a number of physical objects, each with its own complete state space or that there is one object that can undergo a large number of shifts in state. For example, if we just take a look at one coin, it can, with the proper stimulus of, from someone flipping it, move into one of two states, heads or tails. What if instead we have plastic containers of coins, where coins are stacked one on top of the other? we might tip one container that has more coins into say an empty or partially empty container allowing for coins to empty from the one being tipped over to the target container. If the state of each container is defined as the number of coins in that container then we can imagine creating transition rules that more broadly capture the essence of the state transitions without having to enumerate each one separately. One or two rules may suffice to capture the dynamics of the system rather than having to individually specify every single state change. Okay, the prior example hints at the difference between simple state transitions and more complex ones. And this takes us into the realm of production systems. The more complex ones will require pattern matching. And this is what we're going to do with production systems. In production systems, we can map one state to another, or, which is more valuable, we can map groups of state states. We can map one group of states to another group of states. For example, let's consider these individual state transitions. Let's assuming you have a state space that is in the Euclidean plane x comma y and say that 2 comma 3 for example where 2 is the value of x and 3 is the value of y that represents a state of the system. And if the system is in this state at a particular time, at the next time it will move to this state. And so this is what we have right here, is we have a set of nine individual state transitions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the ninth, that tell us all of the individual state transitions for an arbitrary system. Now we may look at this system and wonder if there is some easier way to actually specify the model rather than to have to specify all nine individual transitions. So this is where a production system could come in handy. A production system instead of nine individual rules will have four rules and each of these rules will specify a transition. Now the first rule is an individual transition. If the state is in 2 comma 3 at some particular time then at the next time it will be in 7 comma 2. Now if we go back we'll see that rule right here. So we haven't really gained anything so far in using a production system. However, now let's look at this interesting looking production rule. This says that given that the system is in the state and then question mark x is 
a way to designate a variable if we have the system where this variable can take on two three or four and then one as the value of y then we move into this state at the next time so let me go ahead and just repeat that so that we make sure that we get it what this really does is it says if the system is in state 2 comma 1 3 comma 1 or 4 comma 1 which is really what you get from this expression right here then at the next time we take that value of x that we had over here that matched the current state we add 3 to it and say well that will be the new value here and that will move to 1 over here so if we go ahead and look at the individual state transitions that match this rule we've got 2 comma 1 3 comma 1 and 4 comma 1 which should match to 5 comma 1 6 comma 1 and 7 comma 1 and if we go back we find that indeed that's the case 3 comma 1 maps to 6 comma 1 2 comma 1 maps to 5 comma 1 and 4 comma 1 maps to 7 comma 1 so all you can see here is that there's a simple rule that if we tad 3 to the leftmost integer right here then we get the corresponding target without and we have one rule instead of having three individual specific state transitions if we look at the other two remaining rules in this production system we find that we have a similar situation here we have to match one comma and then something over here where that something can be two three or four and that might maps to five comma two so one comma two one comma three and one comma four we can see that that matches these individual rules right here now this requires just a bit more explanation what it means is this this first variable right here is the some is the thing to be matched and then given that you have that match that's what value you put here so for instance if you have a 2 over here then that's what you have over here so this would match 2 comma 2 and 3 comma 3 which both both go to 6 comma 3 and we can see from this rule or this transition rather and this transition that that rule matches both of these individual state transitions the difference between individual state transitions and group can be seen if we simply go to draw say a two-dimensional grid like this and what we do is we say x1 represents the first element in the state x2 represents the second and then we can have individual states x1 comma x2 represented as little dots or circles like that and then finite state machines then in such a situation in such a state space their transitions would look like this we would start out with one state and then we would transition to another state based on a particular input we won't label the input right now uh, but we will just show the state to state transition and then then this state given one input might go to this state given another input it might go to this state and of course we can draw arrows to our heart content that go ahead and label our state to state transitions so this is the kind of state to state transition that we get in FS uh, finite state machines and Markov models so I'll just put FSM Markov and many other model types that use individual states now to contrast this in a production system 
or anything else that permits pattern matching such as a logic programming language or a set of predicates we have our same states individual states and I'll throw in a few more for good measure but what ends up happening is that regions or subsets of this state space get mapped so for instance I might take this set of individual states and say given the appropriate transition we can go from this set right here to this set over here using a transition that is identified as a pattern matching based rule here we have a graphic representation of the state space whose individual transitions we've just discussed and if we take a look at the four production rules they're numbered one two three four in the PowerPoint slide and we can see the corresponding numbers next to the individual coordinates in the plane here so what we end up here is a set of individual states that are group mapped as follows we go from this these individual states to these individual states by way of the numbered production rule so for instance let's just take an example if we take the state 2 comma 3 we see that via production rule 1 that takes us over to 7 comma 2 over here so here's the number 2 comma 3 and you can see that's labeled with a 1 for the production rule number and that takes us over at the next time point over to 7 comma 2 and we see that that was indeed an individual state transition and a production rule now, production rules are more valuable when they capture and match a whole group of states so for instance 2 comma 1 3 comma 1 and 4 comma 1 these three right here all map to 5 comma 1 6 comma 1 and 7 comma 1 respectively so we'll put a like a little link a little circle right over here to denote that and that was via production rule number two and so that is specified here with the two and the same thing can be said of production rule three is it maps pieces of the state space that are located in this part of this state space over to this part of the state space let's consider another example we'll consider a situation where you've got two water jugs labeled A and B and you can perform separate op several operations on these jugs you can fill a jug you can empty a jug or you can transfer the contents of one jug to the other so let's go ahead and pictorially see what we have here we've got a jug right here we'll call this jug A and jug A will have a capacity of three gallons so we'll go ahead and just put sort of three under here so we know and then B is going to have a capacity of four gallons and we'll just draw a B like this then here's jug B and it's slightly bigger because it can have four gallons and over here's a water spigot so we'll just go ahead and draw a little water spigot right here and we know out of this water spigot we can get our water so water then can be put into A and can be put into B and also the contents of B can be put into A and the contents of A can be put into B so these are operations that can occur in this particular micro world 
but also we can empty a jug. For instance, I might fill up A and then empty it. That's a perfectly legal operation. So what we can do is we can create a production system to define the dynamics of this water jug situation. And one way of doing that is to go ahead and create a set of rules or productions. We'll say the first rule is empty capital J and that just means empty a jug and of course J can then be uh, either equal to A or B so we'll say A comma B like that and likewise I'm going to leave a little bit of room for a good reason but uh, before I go to the next three but the other rules are going to be fill J And then another rule can be transfer all. I'll say transfer as in X for all. And this will be transfer from some jug J1 to some jug J2, where J1 and J2 can be A or B. And then another and last production transfer full J1 to J2. Now you could probably get away without having the last two productions. You can combine them into one. But nevertheless, in this micro world, production number three means transfer all of the contents of J1 into J2, which must mean that there's a constraint. We have to make sure that, for instance, uh, J2 doesn't have enough in it so that when we add J1 the contents of J1 to J2, we don't overflow J2. So that's an internal constraint that we need to check in our definition of this particular rule. And for our fourth rule, we're going to have transfer full, which means that we take only that amount in J1 that can be added to J2 to where it's full. Any amount that cannot be added to J2 because J2 would overflow is left in J1. Now let's go ahead and look at at least one of these rules in more detail. Empty J. This is also an operator in a production system. Sometimes that term is used operator instead of rule. J is equal to A or B and there are two situations where J if I'll put an if statement here. If J is equal to A and we're in the state X comma Y with X being greater than zero then we will move from this state to 0 comma y. And so what all this says is if j is equal to a, if we're essentially emptying a, then regardless of whatever state you have for x, x is going to be equaling to 0 because you're emptying a. So x could be 0, it could be 1, it could be 2, or it could be three because jug A can hold three gallons of water. Now if it's zero this rule doesn't apply because it's already at, uh, in, the, in, in the, the same state so empty J would not apply as a rule or an operator. However if X is one, two, or three then X becomes zero at the end of this rule execution. The rule for J equal B is very similar to J equals A. Uh, it's just that the second variable over here becomes zero instead of the first. Fill, likewise, is very similar to empty. We set either the first value to three or the second value in the coordinate pair to four. Transfer all and transfer full are a little bit more tricky 
because we need to, especially transfer full, because we need to make sure that we don't overflow the target container. 